Hi, so I made a Pokemon game where I tried to recreate its battle system. And I know what you're thinking. These games already exist, you loser. They've been about for like 20 years. Well, yeah. But I'm gonna recreate the battle system, but in the way that the anime does it. Yeah, none of that turn based shit. Ooh, Metapod is harder. Now, forget that. I'm trying to see a proper scrap. Like left foot here and a jab here. I know what, you're trying to get mad? Say no more. Okay, to begin with, we need the Pokemon. Now, I can't say I'm the most active Pokemon fan, but I did watch some of the anime, more specifically part of Gen 3 and all of Gen 4. I've seen Ash's Pikachu lose to a level 5 Snazzy though, but let's move past that. And from all of the episodes that I've seen, the battle that stood out to me the most was Ash vs Paul, when Infernic was fighting Electivire. So that's it, we now have our fighters, time to begin creating them. I didn't want to cheat and just download some of the models off the internet, and also exponentially decrease the time it takes to make this game. And so I had the bright idea of just making them myself. With one reference image and a dream, I got to work. First was his head. Nice. It's looking like him already. And after adding some arms and legs, we got to this stage. And can I just take a second to appreciate this Pokemon? Like, damn. So, so sorry, I kind of lost my focus there. Anyway, he's missing a key component, the flames on his head. But I waited before adding that as it'd just be easier to add them in Unity. And so with him done, I signed up Unity and created a new project and placed him into the world. It looked kind of dry, so I know. Trees. And now with the stage set, I moved forward. Now what I'm about to show you next is a valuable life lesson, just in case you wanted to do something similar yourself. I had an issue with Infernip's animations in Blender, more specifically his gold plates that he wears. I didn't want his place to be affected by the animations, so I unparented them from the main body. Otherwise, stupid shit like this would happen where they just start shrinking and growing. But to keep them moving in flow with the body, I had to add a constraint to them. But the issue is, which I found out the hard way, is that Unity ignores any constraints given to them by Blender. And so this died happening in game. His place just did whatever they liked. Now, this is an issue because, well, he looks like an idiot. I don't know if there's a proper fix to it, but what I just did was export the plates separately as their, as their own objects and then replace them individually. And for some reason, this works. The problem from what I saw was the origin point for the plates. In the original, you'd have the plates here, but the origin's way up here. Whereas after exporting the plates separately, I was able to reset the origins, but in their own spots. Now everything was fine. Now to add the most exciting bit of this game, the moves. Each Pokemon has only 4 moves that they can know at once, as I had to think carefully about this. But in the end, I decided to go with the 4 moves that I myself used when playing Pokemon Diamond. They were Flame Wheel, Flame Thrower, Mark Punch and Flare Blitz. Okay, slight lie there, I actually used Close Combat over Mark Punch because like, why would you not? Just look at the difference. But visually, I think Mark Punch is a lot more suited to this game than Close Combat is. So first was what I thought was the easiest, flamethrower. I created an animation of what I thought breathing fire looked like and then created a flamethrower effect using the VFX graph. If you like the look of this, then check out my guy Gabriel. He's sick and his videos were massive and I used more of his stuff for other moves that were coming up too. Next was flame wheel where he spins and creates a flame wheel with the flames off his head. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I've added the fire on his head now, but yeah. Same process, first the animation and then make the flame leave an effect when you move and done. Mark punch was easy, just a white punch and done. Now flare blitz was a bit more techy because it does some super saiyan looking things so I copied the anime as much as possible and now when you use this move, this is how it goes. It's a hard hitting move and so therefore I added recoil and also it's harder to hit your target with this, so quite risky to be honest. And now Infernape was done. Also, if you like the video so far, then then why not just leave a like? I think it helps the video to perform better, algorithm, stuff like that. I don't know, I hear these words and stuff from other YouTubers, but yeah, hey, hey, leave a like. Next, we needed to create an Electrovire. I don't want to bore you with the details as it went pretty similar to the Infernape process. But to summarize, reference to Dream, 
head, body, fur, collar, and done. Now his moves were different in Infernips. The moves I picked for him were Thunder Punch, Brick Break, Protect, and Thunder. Brick Break was just a reskin mock punch, but more damage but also slower. Protect was a move where you create a force field which no one can go through and so I created a green ball for him which you can activate at the press of a button. It drains stamina depending on how long you use it for. Same goes for flamethrower. Here's it visualized with the UI that I made at the end, but we haven't gotten there yet in this video, so just forget you saw that. With Thunder Punch, I needed a lightning effect. And after making one that was suitable, it turned out like this. Now the final move was Thunder, the danger move, the Flare Blitz equivalent. I had the idea of making a lurp effect to something I've seen called a spline. Even now I still don't know what it is, but here's what it looks like with cubes. I rearrange them around and you see how I can use them for thunder. Wow, looks quite cool don't it? Hard. The only thing left was this UI I made which indicates to you how much health and stamina each of you have. The stronger the move, the more stamina you use. And also the special case I've shown with protect and flamethrower. You gain stamina over intervals, but don't tie yourself out in one go or you'll be in a sticky situation. Now. Welcome to the main event for this evening. In the blue corner, we have Infernape. Infernape, oh, oh. Infernape, just come over here and dump me already. And in the red corner, we have Electivire. Woohoo! Go you! Fight! What fight we have on our hands, guys and girls? An all out brawl, who needs boxing or UFC or any of that crap when you can have this? Tyson who? Floyd what? We will care about Infernape and Electivire here. Oof, what a shot from Infernape. And a quick reply from Electivire. How's a man trying to hide in a forest? Like Infernape won't just burn that thing down. He's coming down to the wire here. This is any man's game now. Oh shit. What? Is that Infernape's ability blaze? No way. Who knows what's gonna happen now? Even though I'm scared, and I made this game. Oh no, it's Flare Blitz, but on speds. And BAM! It's over. We have our victor. Yay! <laughs> Alright, that's it for the video. If you've liked what you've seen, then leave a like and subscribe for more. Cause I'm gonna be making more videos in the future. Yeah, they'll probably take like a month or two each time they come out, but I think it's worth it. Anyways, see ya.